Hey, who doesn't want to be a scratch golfer? If you're watching this video, my guess is you're already a scratch golfer, or let's be honest, you want to be a scratch golfer. Well, the good news is, is today you've come to the right place because we're going to talk about how a scratch golfer approaches the game and what you're going to find out is that it's not as much about technique as it is about the approach to the game. I'm PGA Teaching Professional Todd Cope, Director of Instruction for US Golf TV and the Sanford Power Golf Academy. And everybody wants to play the best golf that they're capable of playing. And for a lot of golfers, a lifetime goal for them is to become a scratch golfer. People who can play a game of golf, a round of golf, and shoot a round under par, that is a different grouping. That's a different level. And today I want to give you some ideas specifically about how we approach the game and how we do that. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Uh, we're doing great content all the time. We do a lot of technical content. Now, this video is not technical. It's about how we approach the game. But if you want information on technical stuff, how to hold the club, how to chip, those types of things, we've got a ton of that. So be sure to subscribe and be sure to leave some comments. How are you approaching the game? If you're a scratch golfer, what are you doing? Because you might be able to help me and more importantly, probably some of our fellow golfers. So let's dive right into this. So the first thing in terms of becoming a scratch golfer is chipping. I, I, my favorite thing to teach, if you've watched any of our videos, we have one video, well over 2 million views on chipping. I love to teach chipping because I find it's an area that people can improve on quickly, but it's also an area that great players do really well. So in terms of approaching the game, like I said, this is not a technical video on how to chip, but what you should be looking for is what I call the magic seven feet. So what I'm looking for, when somebody hits a chip shot, if they wanna be a scratch golfer, their average chip shot, average chip shot, should finish no more than seven feet from the cup after they've hit it. Now, some of them might be nine feet, some of them might be three feet, all right? But you get the idea, the average one should be about seven feet if you wanna be a scratch golfer. Now, why is seven feet such a magical number? Well, because a scratch golfer or somebody who's close to that is probably converting roughly around 50 to 55% of their putts from seven feet. So that means if their average chip shot is seven feet, they're making half of those putts, they're getting up and down half of the time. But if this number here jumps up to let's say 10 or 12 feet, okay, now the make percentage from 10 to 12 feet drops significantly and that little bit of difference takes them from being a scratch golfer probably to being a, you know, a three or four handicap. So that's tip number one, chipping seven feet, keep track of that. All right. Number two, the next one I want to talk about is distance. Now, these are just generalities. Of course, it's based on the tees that you play and the type of course that you play. But generally speaking, if you want to be a scratch golfer, for a male, you know, you better be driving the ball at least 250. If you're playing the senior tees, it might be a little less. If you're playing the back tees, it should be obviously going to be maybe closer to 280 to 300. But generally around 250 for a male. For female golfers, what I have found is, you know, right around 225 is a pretty good number. It can be a little more, a little less, because uh, the tee boxes for women can really vary drastically, but those are some good general guidelines. So if you want to be a scratch golfer and you're only driving at 240 and you're playing the regular tees, that's going to be tough. You want to get in there and kind of figure out why am I not hitting that golf ball as far as I'm capable of. And if you are driving the ball 280 yards for sake of discussion, and you're not a scratch golfer, it's not because of distance. Maybe look at how many fairways are you hitting, you know, other parts of your game. So that's a good guideline right there. These are two great general statistics to kind of get you off and running. Now, I'd be curious to see what some of you have to say about the distance. Do you find these numbers are pretty accurate or maybe you feel something's different? Let's hear from you. All right, strategy. I kind of, I wrote in here strategy, but it's, it's also kind of about how we approach the game. What I mean in terms of strategy is I'd say that Scratch golfers understand when to go for a pin and when not to go for a pin. That's one example. If the pin is in the back left corner and there's a big deep bunker long and left, they're not going at that pin. They're hitting the ball in the middle of the green and they're making their par and they're going to the next hole. All right. They also understand simple things like where to lay up, 
All right, let's say it's a short par four. They say, hey, I'm gonna hit a hybrid on this because it leaves me 100 yards and I am really dialed in with my 100 yard shot. Or maybe it's a par five and they're doing some risk reward calculation in their head and they're like, hey, I'm gonna go for this one because there's not much up around the green or maybe I'm gonna lay up again to that 100 yards because I've really dialed that in. But they understand basic strategy and I think that when I look at a scratch golfer versus somebody who's a three or four handicap, I see the three or four handicap golfer make three or four strategy errors per round that really kind of comes up and bites them. And that causes them to get away from the score that they're capable of shooting. So I would say be aware of your strategy, simple things like laying up to a specific yardage on par fives, understanding when to go out of pin and when not to go out of pin based on your shot shape. We've done some great videos on understanding your shot shape and things like that, but that would be number three. All right, let's keep moving forward here. Um, I wrote down lag putting. Now the reason I wrote down lag putting is this. When we watch golf on TV, which is typically when we think of professional scratch golfers, we see the guy or gal on TV making a bunch of putts. 10, 12, 15 footers, they're making them because that's their week. They're having their week and they are really rolling the rock, they're making some putts. But the truth of the matter is, is what they don't show a lot of is lag putting. So you hit an average drive, it's in the fairway. You hit a, you know, a solid iron shot, but it's 30 feet. Well, I can tell you this, a scratch golfer from 30 feet, they roll that thing right up there where they can tap that thing in. Three or four handicapper, they're probably short three or four feet, or they roll by six feet. Now, some days they make those three and four footers, but some days they don't. And that's what happens, and all of a sudden that happens once or twice around, and a round that could have been at scratch or under par has now all of a sudden moved to two or three over. So never underestimate lag putting. Now, the, what's the key to lag putting? You know this already. You don't need me to probably tell you this, but it's, it's speed. Speed is the key, you know, and this isn't a technical one. We've done a ton of videos on putting on speed and, and uh, you know, reading greens, you name it, we've done it. But really make sure you're practicing your speed. All right, let's keep moving along here. Because um, if you're still with me, you, you, you know what this word is, patience, all right? Because you've listened to some of this stuff here, patience. What do I mean by patience in terms of how a scratch golfer approaches a game? Here's what I see. A good professional golfer, a scratch golfer, understands the natural ebb and flow of an 18 hole round. And I don't care if you make your living playing the game or you, know, you sell insurance but you're a zero handicap, there are times within that 18 holes where things are not going well and there's times where they are going really well. So let me just give you an example. Um, one golfer plays the first three or four holes, let's say they play the first four holes and they're two over par and they're a scratch golfer. Well, when they walk to the fifth tee, I can tell you this, they're not overly concerned. They're like, eh, you know, played four holes, I'm a couple over. They know, hey, I got two par fives coming up yet on this side. I got a short par four on, you know, on the back nine. And they know that over the stretch of the next 14 holes, they're gonna get hot, they're gonna make a pot, they're gonna hit a couple close holes, they're gonna make a few birdies. The three or four handicapper, Here's what they're thinking when they walk to the fifth tee or the fourth tee, whatever, wherever they're at. Okay, they're, they're two over through three holes. They get to the fourth tee box. What are they thinking? Oh my gosh, I'm two over par already. I want to shoot under par. And they start panicking. And they start forcing things. And they start making bad strategy decisions. They start doing things that they shouldn't be doing. And before they know it, the round is away. So I would say patience is, the, is one of the key components of how you approach the game. Understand that I don't care how good of round you're having, there's gonna be a three or four hole stretch where things are really clicking. And there's gonna be a three or four hole stretch where things aren't really in line. And the ability to navigate that and be patient with that is gonna allow you to shoot the best score possible. All right, so those are some of the tips there. But next time you go to the golf, what are we gonna do next time you walk to the golf course? I wanna give you something here that you can do because we've got some good stuff here already. But the first tee, the first tee ball tip, what are you gonna do on the first shot of the day that can give you the best chance to be a scratch golfer. And I'm gonna write this word down because this is a big word for us here at the Academy, and it's clarity. That's the biggest difference in my 25 years of coaching versus a scratch golfer versus somebody who's a three, four handicap or higher. The good golfers have clarity. Now, that doesn't mean 
that they don't hit bad shots. It doesn't mean that they don't have days where they're fighting their swing, but it means when they walk to the first tee and they're going to hit that first tee ball in their head, they're saying to themselves, this is what I'm focusing on today when it comes to my swing. What the average golfer does or the higher handicap does, they're trying different things all the time through the course of the round. Oh, I'm going to try this and I'm going to try that. And then they're listening to their buddies who they're playing with. So if you want to be a scratch golfer, you've got to have clarity when you hit that shot. So playing great golf is technique, but it's also about how you approach the game. These tips, this first tee ball tip right here, hopefully can help you become a scratch golfer.